Hey everybody! Tonight I was going to take a step back from my usual 3D uh, art tutorials and we're going to talk about just the business of being an online artist today. I'm going to create a picture using an iPhone this time, um, mostly just as an example to show how you can kind of quickly and easily create some digital art and then we're going to go through step by step how to upload it to a, uh, a print on demand site and then how to market that piece of work so that you can actually sell it as a print. So um, let's uh, get started. Okay, so here I have an image of a, uh, a bridge. Um, it's, this is the uh, pedestrian bridge to Powers Island uh, on the Chattahoochee River in, um, uh, north, on the north side of Atlanta. And uh, I mean, you can make any kind of art you want. You choose any kind of subject. However, if you're intending to sell stuff online, it sometimes helps if you have stuff that is going to be keyword rich in its description because the way people find art online is searching through Google. So um, you want something that will maybe pick up on some of those searches. So in this case I have kind of a subject here that I've picked. Um, the, like I said, there's a photograph I took with a with my iPhone and um, you know, I have a subject here that uh, is going to have some searchability. You, know, you have a lot of keywords in Powers Island, the Chattahoochee River, Atlanta. So uh, it might be something that you know picks up a few views. Now also I took this with my uh, iPhone and I'm just going to show you something real quick. Um, I have a picture here, another picture from my iPhone of my uh, desktop. And um, this is actually a screenshot. One thing you want to do with if you're taking pictures with an iPhone that helps just a little bit is there's this little HDR up here and if you click on that it'll turn green. And uh, it takes somewhat higher uh, higher quality pictures. For instance, uh, in this picture, if you were to see the, if it were not on a HDR, the sky here, instead of being blue, would show up as just kind of a washed out white. And your shadows might come in a little too darker. So it's a, it's a nice little feature on the iPhone. Um, so yeah, remember when you're taking, if you're going to take pictures with your iPhone, turn on the HDR. Now I could try and uh, sell prints of this photo as is, but what I am going to do instead is use uh, a program called Topaz Adjust. Um, there's, there's all sorts of things you can find out there. This is just one of them that will allow you to add some style to your photographs. And you should think about, you know, creating a, sort of a, a style that's all your own. That's something that's kind of important when it comes to selling art is to make your art different from everybody else's. And style is one of the keys of doing that. So we're going to fire up Topaz Adjust here. And um, it starts out with this default picture of a cup. I'm just going to load that my uh, picture from my desktop. And after waiting a few seconds, you see it's already kind of picked a style. Uh, it was just whatever happened to be said on the last time I was using this. It creates a really interesting looking artwork. Uh, not really the style I like uh, for me, but it, uh, it might work for you. But over here on the, uh, the right hand side, you have a bunch of presets. Uh, these are kind of places you can start from. And then you have groups of presets. And I, I like the impressionistic group just as a starting point. And I usually pick one of these Monet styles. And then once you've kind of settled on a good starting point, you just click this uh, little thing up here. And then you can go in and adjust the individual uh, settings. So if I want to pick a different brush style, I tend to like this one right here. And then you can uh, just kind of mess with these sliders to get what you want. Make a thicker brush. And I like the volume and opacity all the way up on my paint. And you can you can really spend a lot of time in this. But once you've kind of picked a style that you really like, you can always um, save that as your own preset by hitting this little plus button up here. Uh, let me do a couple more things, and I'll save this one off, in fact, just for a demonstration. I like to add sort of a canvas texture to make it look like this was painted on a canvas. Um, it may not be entirely ethical if you're trying to fool people into thinking that it was painted on a canvas, but if you're clear in the description when you post this online for sale, it's, it should be okay. Canvas 3. And so just like that, um, I've added, well, let's... Uh, so now I can save that off if I want. I can save it to, uh, I can pick one of the tags to tag it, but I'm just going to save it under. 
Daniel 1. So now if I want if I have a series of photos, I can apply that ex same exact filter to all of those photos very quickly. Uh, that's a nice thing to do, um, especially because uh, when you're trying to sell art online using like a print on demand service, volume, you need kind of both volume and quality. So uh, having a lot of images and being able to upload them fast is kind of a benefit, especially if you can make them all look really good. So we'll save this uh, picture off. Uh, I just call it uh, styled. And uh, I always save for the maximum quality. And just like that, we have it saved. Okay, so for our next step, we're going to actually upload this picture and make it available for sale. It's uh, pretty easy these days to uh, sell art online. What you can do is register with a print-on-demand service. Now, a print-on-demand service is a, uh, a website that lets you upload your artwork, and then they will uh, put that on the Internet for you and allow people to visitors to buy prints of that work. They'll handle the shipping and returns and uh, payment collection. They do everything for you. Uh, then they'll send you a commission um, or a markup, however you want to, however the uh, particular print-on-demand service uh, specifies it. And um, yeah, it's it's easy. You don't have to do very much. Um, now you probably do need to do some work to get people to find your art at a, at a print on demand site, and we'll get onto and we'll get into that in just a moment. First, though, we need to get the art up there. And here I'm on uh, fineartamerica.com, and they are my uh, print print on demand service of of uh, choice. Um, I've logged into my account, and I'm going to go to my profile. And you can see here quite a bit of my artwork's already up here. Um, I'm going to choose this to upload the image. And we'll find our image. Um, I think we called it 11 styled. And upload it. Now there is a uh, 25 megabyte limit per file that you upload. So it's sometimes something you might have to watch out for. All right, and there's our image. And now we've got to fill in some details about this image. Um, I've already done some typing behind the scenes here. So I'm just going to copy and paste some information. And we'll give it a title. Uh, keywords. Now keywords are really important for the search engine within uh, Fine Art America. Not quite so much for Google, but you do want to uh, put some good keywords in. And in this case I've created some keywords for this particular scene. Um, bridge Impressionist Powers Island, which is where that bridge is. Uh, the Chattahoochee, which is the river, that's right that that's right there along that park. That's in Atlanta. Sandy Springs is the part of Atlanta that it's in. Uh, the style. Sometimes you might want to put things like color. Anything somebody's searching for would uh, enter. Any, anything that somebody who's searching for art like yours would enter. So we'll copy those and paste those keywords in. And then I also have a description. That's... Um, something important about your description as well as your uh, keywords, be sure to include your name. Uh, so that way somebody searching for you as the artist can find your stuff. And I also like to repeat the title in the description. I want to put quotation marks around it. You know, the, uh, now for a, um, a description, you want to kind of tell a little bit of a story about how you made the art and why you made it. Um, it's something that buyers are actually interested in. So we'll copy that and paste that in. All right, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that Fine Art America offers. Um, if you're doing stuff that's not WorkSafe viewing, you might check check and know here. Uh, there's ga you can create your own galleries, which are basically ways to organize your main gallery. And I believe I have a something here I call impressionist photos, and that well, uh, the, our artwork will fit really well in that for me. Um, you can join groups that you can submit your art to. Um, I'm not going to submit it to any of these today. Uh, you do want to select the right category. In this case, it's digital art because we created it with... Uh, probably could do photographs, but it's, I, I think I say digital art because of all the filters we applied using a Topaz impression. Um, there's no original in this case, uh, but if you are a painter, you might have an original you want to sell, and this would allow you to kind of advertise that. 
Uh, oh, now here's probably the most important part, which is setting the markup on your artwork. Um, this is the amount you will make if a print of this particular size sells. So say for instance, if I sell an 18 by 24 of this, I will make $55. Now I've filled all these out beforehand. You can specify default values. Uh, you can change these to whatever you want. Um, I generally recommend a pretty good commission. Uh, I mean, after all, it is your art. So, you know, don't sell yourself cheap. Um, you can also do greeting cards, uh, pillows, various other things that you think this might look good on. Shower curtains, even. I think I'll actually maybe... If you leave a price blank, that means it won't be offered. We'll do a shower curtain here for 10 bucks. Um... And if something isn't quite lined up right, you can just fix that. Okay, also, if you think your um, image might be commercial, used for some sort of commercial application as an illustration on a book, or uh, somebody might want to print on tea, uh, coffee mugs or something, um, you can participate in this image licensing program. And this allows people to buy the image the digital version of the image and use it for their commercial purposes. Um, it's a pretty useful service. Uh, I've used it from time to time, and so I'll just leave these prices in here. Uh, now, I'm going to leave this Facebook synchronization and Twitter synchronization turned off because um, we're going to do manually do some marketing in a few minutes. Uh, but this can automatically do some marketing for you. Uh, the Twitter one is pretty good, but I don't really care for the Facebook one. But basically what these will do is automatically post to your Facebook, uh, Facebook feed and Twitter feed for all the people who follow you on those pages. But um, like I said, I'm going to show you how to do this manually and have a little bit more control over it. So with all that done, we'll click Submit. And just like that, our art is for sale on the Internet. So for the next step, though, we need to actually get people to come to this page and buy your art. Now, the keywords and description we entered will help. Um, that will probably hit some Google search. You know, some people might find it through Google searches and such. But you also want to use uh, social media to um, get people to come here. So that's going to be our next step. Okay, so here I am on my Facebook page. Now this is my personal Facebook page, and I wouldn't recommend trying to sell your art through your personal page. Facebook might even ban you for such a thing. What you need to do is create a fan page. Um, I'm not going to walk you through the steps of doing that, but I'll show you how you can start. You just click on this little down arrow here, and you have the option to create a page. And then down here in the bottom corner, you can be you pick artist, band, or public figure, and you'll pick this, and you'll follow the instructions to create a Facebook fan page. Now I'm just going to jump over to mine. Once you've created it, you log in again through your first through your personal page, but then you click on this little down arrow, and you select use Facebook as. In this case, I'll use it as my fan page, the art of Daniel Eskridge. And here it's brought me to uh, my fan page. So now I can kind of scroll down and see how my latest posts have gone and such. Um, but here's what I'm here's where I'm going to market my uh, my latest uh, artwork. So first thing I'm going to do is actually uh, open another tab or another browser window, and I'm going to go back to that uh, that artwork and uh, get a link to it. All right, so all I'm going to do is uh, up in my uh, address bar, just copy, uh, highlight the whole address and copy that. And then I'm going to paste it in here. And it's all smart enough to um, get a picture and uh, create a title and a description. And then um, the link that you paste it in, you can actually now backspace over and you don't need it anymore. Uh, you might want to put something in here, some sort of description. Um, and my latest uh, impressionist image, or we'll call it an impressionist photo. And um, something you might want to experiment with here is uh, putting hashtags in front of the um, the keywords. Uh, I don't know if it makes a difference at this point, but uh, it's something you can do and probably shouldn't forget about. And then uh, put a little uh, emoticon there. It's something they say helps with click-through rates. Uh, I don't know, but um, I always add them. 
Uh, you can also, because it's a fan page, you can go in here and you can change the, uh, you could upload it. First of all, you could upload a better image if you'd like. Um, sometimes I do. I'll, I'll upload something that maybe only shows a part of the image. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that the image that you see here is not what everybody else is going to see. They're going to see a roughly a uh, ratio of two by one, two to one image, or you know, the side ratio of two to one uh, kind of piece of this image. So what I like to say is um, something to the effect of, you know, art by me. And then let the uh, visitors know to click on the image, or click on the, yeah, click on the image to see the full version. And you also want to have maybe have a small call to action here to order prints. And then since I already have my name in the, the lower description, I'll back it out of this one here. So now I got the title of the artwork and a nice little description here. It says art by me and tells the user to or tells the uh, visitors to click on the image to see the full version and to order prints. Now, um, let's say I want this to go out at a better time. Uh, I mean, right now it's late afternoon. It's actually a pretty good time. I can schedule it for later if I want. Uh, I think I'm just going to publish it right now, though. And there it is. It's on my Facebook page. Now visitors will see this. Um, something else I might want to do is boost the post. Now, this is something I... Uh, would uh, caution you about this cost you money this is advertising um, so you might need to set up an advertising account with them uh, I'm not going to boost this one in particular but I'm going to show you how to get there you have a budget and amount of time that it's going to run for as an ad but what's really nice about this is you can select your audience so basically you can send it out to all the people who like your page uh, People who like your page and their friends, but I like this third opportunity, people you choose through targeting. And you can create an audience, and in this case, maybe I'll type in impressionists and set it up to go to whatever countries you want, age ranges, genders. Let's, uh, and then here's where you put in the interest. So let's see if I can put in impressionism. There we go, Impressionism. And so now I have a uh, an audience that likes Impressionist art. I can save that audience. Okay, so once you've created that audience, here we have our Impression, it selects that one. I have a, my Impressionism audience. Um, it's going to give you a suggested amount to spend and how long you want to run that ad for. Uh, $20. It estimates the people it's going to reach. I found that this estimate is never anywhere close to correct. I mean, sometimes I go way over, a lot of times way under. I mean, you can go as low as a dollar. That's all I'll do on this one. Now it needs to be as little as a dollar per day, so I'm only going to run this one for one day. So one dollar for one day, it thinks it's going to reach 68 to 180 people. It'll probably reach more than that, but uh, not a whole lot more. But anyway, uh, it's just an example of you know how, how little you have to start with. And it, it sometimes works. I, I sometimes get a few sales from it. Uh, you do need to have an account set up. Um, in this case, I have it set up to go from my uh, to go to my PayPal account. And with that, you can hit boost. And about 15 minutes later, you'll get an email telling you if your ad is approved or not. Um, I've never had one rejected, but then again, I, I sell you know reasonably family friendly art, so. All right, and so with that, I think we'll call this uh, done. We've got we've gone all the way through. Um, we've created some art. We've uh, uploaded it to Fine Art America, we, and then we've uh, done some marketing. And that's you know what you can do. There's lots of other things you can do for marketing. There's uh, of course there's the other uh, uh, social media sites. You can go on Twitter and all that. I mean, there's and each one has its own caveats and has it sort of its own learning curve. Uh, I prefer Facebook. I tend to get most of my hits from there. And so uh, I hope you enjoyed this and everybody have a good night. Thank you.